Trying to know to look back on last Friday evening's game and joined by Samantha Lambert. Uh, Samantha, how are things? Good now, good. Well, uh, we have a lesson in the second half, but the score didn't really do them justice. No, I don't think so. Yeah, they were flying to get after a great start, I suppose. They really kept in with Cork, Cork or All Ireland finals from last year. They're, they're, it was a big task, I suppose, um, coming in, but they really did start well and um, they really stuck with them. I suppose half time came and um, Cork took over. Um, they just kind of seemed to find that extra gear and they really drove on. And um, I suppose Chip just kind of not fell apart, but I suppose maybe ran out of steam. Um, but look, they've they've loads to work on. Uh, they have to take the positives from the game. And look, they they load the lessons to be learned, and that's the most important thing to take out of the game. I think for them is to learn from the mistakes that they made and. I think if they learn from the mistakes and bring it with them the next day and try to improve in them, that they've um, they've loads of potential and they've um, a serious season ahead. Um, so like they can't dwell on all their mistakes or that loss uh, too much with the game against Waterford coming up. And I suppose that's a very extremely important game um, for the second round of the league. Um, so that'll be their next uh, focus and as I said they can't dwell on um, the beating that they've got from Cork because um, that'll take over so I think they need to forget about that uh, focus on the positives and what they were doing well especially in the first half and uh, drive it on and look um, it's a new process, a new system in place new management in place, loads of new players are getting their chances last night and I think um, everyone deserves a chance and you know, a lot to improve themselves and I think they just need to drive on and, and look at themselves again and Focus and keep keep things going. Don't get too caught up on on, on a beating from Cork. Remember, they are all Ireland finalists, and they have some great players there with serious accolades. So, um, look, they learn from it. Yeah, like because as you said, the positives. Uh, Roshan Daly in the first half, she was all over the place. She was flying, going up and down that wing, and she was on both wings. Like she got the goal then as well. Like so, that is one of the positives. Her performance. Yeah, definitely. She was all over the place, is right. Um, and I suppose a goal to um in things really it was going it was going really well in the first half. You know, Roshin's extremely fit, uh great, great girl, um, very a, a seriously positive attitude and very encouraging. I suppose she was on the verge of the team last year when I was playing, and um no matter whether she was on starting 15 or she was um coming on as a sub, she always had a great attitude and was encouraging everyone around her. And I think that's a great sign of a player that no matter where they are on the team, is it one to fifteen or fifteen to thirty that she really turned around and really um kept us all going and like I'm delighted to see her playing well and to have gotten her starting position there wing back last night. So it's great, it's great to see that those young ones. Yeah, because the two Kennedy sisters as well, uh, they were flying as like uh, Anna Rose back from injury and uh the show great heart there. Um the two of them are two positives as well. And there's plenty there to build on. Oh, definitely. Like, she's Caelan and um, Anna Rose are extremely young uh, players and they have a great connection between them. I think Emma Morrissey as well is another serious player with uh, brilliant talent uh, at centre forward. And I think the three of them really connected well last night and they really up the middle then. It was quite strong. So, um, extremely strong players, uh, very talented, as I said, and plenty of fitness. So, uh, like, you know, the, the future is bright. Um, when it comes to those three especially so um, they drive it on they have great determination within them as well and they know each other well from playing with each other at club too in Arlo so um, it's great to see they're, they're, they're performing well at the minute Yeah and one thing that Cork seemed to work well on they put Lauren Fitzpatrick under a lot of pressure for kickouts no, no fault of Lauren's but uh, they pushed right up on the kickouts and even when Lauren was hitting 50 or 60 yards the Cork midfield and Cork half half back line were still pushing on for him, like so. It was kind of a struggle there to get on top. Yeah, Cork do that well, all right. Um, they always seem to push for kickouts, and I think that's a work rate out of their forward line, um, putting the goalie under pressure at any stage. And I suppose, look, um, it's down to the the other teams, uh, defenders and midfielders to give options to the goalie and to Lauren last night, let's say. Um, I suppose Cork did it quite well. They seemed to bunch it up and then spread out and there was options left, right and centre for Martina and the goals. Um, so it's just something, that, again, that, that, that Tip can work on for the next day. And um, 
like Lauren played extremely well and she used a lot of her targets a um, majority of the time um, I thought um, she just needs to uh, I suppose to get more options outfield and people looking for the, the kick out to it intent so um, Cork have always worked on that so they are an extremely hard team to get out of and I suppose a lot of teams nowadays are focusing on the they're focusing on the kickouts because it's an extremely um, important part of the game. And I think if you can put pressure on the kickouts, it's a really putting the other team on the back foot. So um, they caught, they did it very well last night, and it is uh, serious pressure when you're under pressure trying to get out your kickouts. Kind of um, a, a fair problem, but look, something to work on. Um, easy to it that that can be rectified um, easily. So just loads more options, I suppose, next Sunday as you go out to play Waterford. Yeah, because uh, like as you said, uh, Martino O'Brien, uh, whatever way Cork seemed to work on it, you could see it from up high where they drag all the players into the middle of the field and players just run left and right then at the last second to give her them options. Like so, uh, it was something. But uh, I suppose after Tip got the first goal, conceding one four, then straight after it uh, didn't help, even though they got the goal back just before half time. Yeah, um, I suppose yeah. Uh, the the car scored one four. Maybe it was a time that maybe Tip could have um, went down or something, or that that little bit of cuteness I suppose could have came into it. That someone kind of tried to slow up the game for them to know it and put a a stop to their momentum. Um, that's something that I would have caught when we played Galway and not Galway. Um, Kerry and Donegal the year that we did get relegated. Um, that whenever we got momentum, someone went down on the opposite team. And I know that's not the way to go about it, but it's these small things that kind of make the difference would you believe in the end like and I know it's not a way that you go out and you, you want to play but if it's slowing someone else's momentum before they score 1-4 I think I think it has to be done like whether that's going down in some shape or form now I know the 15 minute slots um, for a water break is there as well like so there is a lot of starts and stopping going on as it is anyway but um yeah, look, we got the, they, they got the goal back at before half time. I think that would have settled them going back into the dressing room a bit, you know. And as you said earlier, like they, they really did stay with them until half time. Yeah, because like Tip were in it at half time. Uh, Cork brought on three subs at half time. I think the Cork subs between them for 2 4, 2 5. That bit of experience the Cork had showed the difference in the second half. Yeah, like the, the Cork subs that came on, like they're very experienced, to be fair. Like one of them is Libby Coppinger. Um, who else was on? Uh, Maeve Callahan and um, I can't remember the, the last sub that was made but they're all experienced players who was it? Derek Hiley oh Derek Hiley came on yeah and Ima <clears throat> Meany came on there towards the end as well like you know they've been involved in the, the Cork team there the last few years like you know so they, that was a wealth of experience to be bringing on off the bench as well so I don't think the Cork team uh, were really weakened when, when uh, the substitutions were made to be fair um, so that was kind of another boost for, for Cork when legs were getting tired Yeah I suppose one of the positives was the second half we've seen Roisin Howard back in the field too getting 10 or 15 minutes did that bring her on especially when she was turning an, in, an injury there the last couple of weeks Yeah like Howard's an excellent player she's one of the, the best in the country um, if you ask me uh, very nifty she's extremely fit at the minute and um very skillful player, like you know, and tough to mark, uh, believe me. So, um, you can see her nearly kind of, I suppose, she, 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 may, she may get a start there, uh, sometime soon. Uh, she's well good enough to be starting, so I'm sure she'll, um, she'll make that start in 15 and she'll, she'll make her impact. Uh, I don't think enough ball went into her last night, maybe, uh, for her to show what she's made of, but, uh, there's plenty of game there yet and play, plenty of, of, of time to show what she's made of. Yeah, um, Looking at the match live there and on the days, uh, Simbin, uh, it seemed a bit harsh to us in, in the stadium. Maybe it looked different on the television. No, I agree with you. I think it was a little bit harsh. I'm there looking at the game of Mayo and Galway there just before I came on to there. And uh, I, I think there is a little bit of inconsistency amongst referees, to be honest. Um, uh, shows whether it's a uh, charging or whether it's someone standing their ground or um, it's hard to know what way the referees want to be given like you know so I think that's something that uh, referees in LGFA <clears throat> will have to look at um, I know there was quite a bit of controversy last year as well um, over uh, the you know whether you're standing your ground or you're, you're charging I think that, that's something that needs to be kind of defined um, 
clearly, to be honest. But um, yeah, look, it was it was harsh in my eyes as well. To be honest, I actually was a bit surprised by it. But um, such is life, I suppose, and you have to get on it. Yeah, because it didn't even look like a free from where we were. Maybe we're uh, being a bit biased to that now, but that's just the way it looked like from where we were. Yeah, I know, and it was. It was a tough hit now, all right, to be fair. Like, to give it to Sean and Kenny went off injured. Like, no, it was a good um, a good physical um, clash, I suppose. Um, but only just came out the wrong side of it and maybe looked different from where the referee was standing. Yeah, looking forward to Waterford now next weekend. I suppose having it in Clamell is going to be a big help too. Like, I know... It's behind closed doors, but there's plenty to work on there from last night. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm sure the girls are back there training tomorrow and Tuesday and they look at the, the game. They'll see where they have to improve. You know, there's loads of work that has been done. They're seriously fit. And uh, I think that there's just small bit tweaking here and there. And they really, you know, that was their first game a lot and playing together. Like, you know, so it's going to take time. It's not just going to happen overnight. It's not going to, like, there's not just going to, um, be the full complete team overnight like you have new management in you have new girls in you have girls that are making their debut like the girls can come back they haven't paid county in a few years so it's not just going to happen especially against the All-Ireland finalists from last year it's not just going to happen it's going to take time and I think it's just patience that's needed and um, give girls a chance and, and they'll, they'll get there just, just they need to keep believing in themselves I suppose and as I said work on what needs to be worked on um, the few bits that they think that they can improve on but there's loads going well as well yeah, and just looking at the championship draw from the other night, um, Cork again and Mead. And uh, should we all know what Mead were? There were a big obstacle two years ago. Tip were looking to get out and um, get the result in the All Ireland final. But Mead came back last year and got promoted. So it'd be nothing soft in championship either. No, no. And I, look, I, I don't think any of the groups would have been um, an easy group to get into, to be honest. Like, you know, you look at Waterford there, they're, they're, they got Dublin again this year. Um, and Tyrone so like, that's not an easy group either you look at Kerry like I think they got Donegal and Armagh or something like that or um, Galway you know I think it was Donegal and Galway like they, they're extremely um, tough groups and the last group as well like I think you've had the Northern teams like Cavan and Monaghan and um, I know who else in a Mayo so like geez, they, they, like I don't think any group is going to be easy and as you said like me there are they were a big obstacle to get it past in 2019. They're an incredibly young team as well, and they're they're progressing every year, and um, they're out to to make their mark in senior this year too. Like you know, they want to stay up just as much as any of the teams in senior. Um, so they're not going to be an easy pushover, and obviously you have Cork as well again. That'll be a great test uh, to see where both teams have come. Um, so like you know, the league and being up Division One is a seriously important um place to be to get these games in preparation for the championship and no better no better teams to get games from only Cork, Waterford and Dublin there in two weeks time like so and um, it's great preparation for the girls because championship is only around the corner as well once the league finishes and um I think it's those type of games that they learn about themselves that they can improve on that they'll develop as a team and um I think it's great for them to be getting to play those that caliber of teams like because they're well able to compete with them um, and I think they, they'll be a serious outfit there once they get there they want stay gel Yeah and having the Dublin game inside the stadium at Hardest is a huge fillip for the girls then as well Yeah like I mean sure they sh- why, why should they play anywhere else you know you've seen two uh, male uh, outfits there today the footballers and the hurlers like you know why shouldn't the footballers be in there so um, may we see more of them playing in Simple Stadium, their home ground, like you know. So, um, a great occasion again. I always enjoy playing in Simple Stadium, you know. It's a very important field, I suppose, probably my second favorite in, in, in the county to play in, like you know. So, um, I didn't get too many opportunities to play there, but anytime I did play there, I absolutely loved it and relished it. So, um, great opportunity, as I said, again for the girls, and um, hopefully they can they can get a result on the day. Hopefully, they can get the results. Uh, next weekend at two against Waterford uh, Samantha thanks for being with us and hope to talk to you after the Waterford game yeah thanks a million for having me again